Okay, so to compare the uh, the older versus the new, um, obviously this is a male item. This is actually a genuine BMW pump. Um, it's got a BMW part number on there. Um, but as you can see, it's looking it's looking like it's been on the car forever. Um, I very much doubt it's the original one because the car's done 170,000 miles, so it will have been replaced at some point. Um, what we need to do next is dump that one to one side because it's no longer required. Here's the gasket. Gonna sit on there like that. We'll um, offer the gasket and the uh, and the pump up to the block and put some bolts in. What we need to do now then is um, fit the uh, fit the water pump and the gasket. Now this is going to be a pain because um, what we've got to do is we've got to try and get the gasket to stay in place whilst we fit the pump. What some people like to do is put a little bit of RTV sealant around just to hold the gasket in place. Um, you can do that, I don't see any dramas with that. Um, however, the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna use the bolts to keep the uh, keep the gasket in the right place. What I've done is I've given them a good brush over, all the bolts that I removed, including the ones for the lifting lug, uh, given them a good brush over with um, with my wire brush just to, just to clean the threads up so that they'll all go back in nicely. Um, so what we'll do next is offer up the pump. Let's get a couple of bolts in here, like so, and then they should hold the gasket in place. Just like so. So there you go. Now I've got two bolts in. The gasket's not going anywhere. It's in the right position. Now I can uh, get the rest of the bolts in. Get them all in before you tighten any of them. The problem you have with things like this is if you tighten one bolt down, it retains the part that you're bolting down in that position. Now that may mean that all the other holes for all the other bolts are not aligned. So get them all in thing by finger first. Once they're all in, then tighten them all down. Okay, they're all in. So what I'll do, I'll nip them up. I'm just gonna nip them up to touch and then I'll get the torque wrench out and torque them to spec. Now they're all done up, um, they are not tight, they're literally just nipped up, uh, nipped up to touch. What I'll do now is I will get the torque wrench out and torque them to spec. Okay, I just have a quick check in the manual. Uh, the manual states that the torque setting for this uh, is obviously dependent upon the engine, but um, water pumps with M6 bolts is 10 newton meters and water pumps with M8 bolts is 22 newton meters. These are M6, so therefore I'm going to do 10 newton meters. It's not a lot at all, really. Again, I'll do them opposite. And there we are, that's all six torqued up. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is fit this bracket back to the block. Once I uh, find the hole for it, I'm doing this blind at the moment. There it is. Again, get both bolts in before you tighten them. Okay, 
Okay, they're both in. <laughs> Next, we're going to fit the pipe that goes from the water pump up to the thermostat housing. Okay, I've given this a little bit of a, a brush with my brass brush. Come on. It's a bit awkward because it's such a short pipe. There's not a lot of give in it. There we go. That should do it. There we go. Next, before we uh, before we fit the fan clutch and the other hose, what we're going to do is we're going to remove all the belts. Um, each belt overlaps each other, so the one for the aircon compressor sits on top of the one for the power steering, and the one for the power steering sits on top of the one for the alternator. So all three have to come off in order to change the uh, the alternator and water pump belt. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, here on the bottom of the AC compressor, as you can see, we've got exactly the same kind of adjuster that was on the alternator. What I'll do, I'll try and adjust it the way it's designed to be. Um, hopefully this one won't, uh, won't just strip off like the one on top of the alternator did. Um, once I've taken the tension off the AC compressor, this belt will be free to come off. Once that belt's free to come off, then I can do the same over here on the power steering pump. Uh, again, the same kind of adjuster. And then that belt will come off, allowing me to take this one off. Then we can swap them over um, and get the belts back uh, installed. Okay, unlike the, uh, the one that was on the alternator, this adjuster actually works perfectly. So what I'll do, I'll demonstrate, and as you can see, the power steering pump moves backwards and forwards, applying tension to the belt. So if I leave it like that, nice and tight, if I do that, you can see the power steering pump moves towards the block, and the belt's gone nice and loose. That is the way it's supposed to be. Obviously, the one on the alternator was, uh, was toast, um, but we'll live with it, we can, uh, we can manage. Um, now the same on the power steering. Okay, so that's all three belts off. Um, what I need to do next is get the new ones and just offer them up as a comparison, just to make sure that they are the right belts. Yep, that's the same size. And Yep, that one's the same as well. So that's the uh, that is the power steering belt. Um, I don't have the replacement for that yet. However, um, as soon as it comes in the mail, that will be getting exchanged. So I'll keep that one to one side for the moment. Um, that's the uh, that is the old um, aircon compressor belt. As you can see, it's it's seen better days. It is looking a little bit cracked. Um, so that's uh, that's garbage as well. But as for the uh, the main belt for that drives the water pump and alternator. That one is proper toast. There's cracks everywhere in this. Um, so that's, and it doesn't feel very flexible either. It feels quite stiff. So it's hardly any wonder it was um, probably well overdue. Well, it is well overdue a change anyway. So next thing we're gonna do is refit all the belts back to the car. Um, and then uh, and then we can refit the, or fit, should I say, the, the brand new hose before we uh, fill the cooling system up. Okay, so that's the, the new AC belt installed. Um, the tension I like to get on it is basically a quarter of a turn along its length. If we can twist it a quarter of a turn like so, then that's good. Uh, again, power steering belt. Um, that's the old belt um, that I've put back on because obviously I haven't received the uh, the new one yet. But the, the, the belt for the alternator and the water pump is this one just here and that one's brand new. So 
Next step is to install the um, pipe work for from the thermostat housing that goes down to the down to the radiator, um, and then install the water pump pulley. Okay, next step is to install the uh, install the pipe work. What we'll do, we'll leave the clips to one side because we're going to try and get this end onto the thermostat housing first. There is a little guide bracket down here, a little plastic one. But what we'll do, we'll leave that out of the way for the moment because all it does is it causes issues trying to trying to align the trying to align the hose. So get this end in place first. It is a little bit of an awkward position to fit it. Okay, I'm not in yet. There we are, I think that one's in. Yep. Now, we'll put the hose clips on. That one's for that end. For the top end. Watch has come off. This one's for the bottom end. Now the top end's on, let's stick the bottom end back onto the rad. That one, there's a little plastic stop there. As soon as the uh, hose is up to that, then that's fine. Okay, so let's get this hose clip up to where it needs to be. Come on. And there we are, that's where it needs to be. Get our tool. Tighten up the hose clamps. Okay, what we're going to do next, install the water pump pulley onto the water pump. Um, just move the belt out of the way, it doesn't need to be in the, uh, uh, it doesn't need to be involved in, at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're just going to line the holes in the pulley up with the water pump, which is easier said than done when you can't see it. There we go, there's one. Okay, now they're all in, we'll just give them a little tighten. Again, do opposites just to, because it's good practice. Now, one thing I have noticed, uh, I've made a little bit of a boo-boo. I'm not gonna be able to get the belt on with the, uh, with the hose in that position because there isn't a gap for the, for the belt to go through. So I'm gonna drop this part of the hose off again, fit the belt to the pulley, and then refit the refit the hose. Okay, well I've done. As I said before, I've just dropped that hose out. Now we're going to align the belt. Okay, once you dropped onto the pulley for the power steering at the moment. There we go. Right, when we're going to do this, I'm going to hold it in position there. There is, the tension is off the alternator, but there is still a fair bit. What I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the engine over using this massive socket. When I get it on there, 
I'm going to turn the engine over gently, which will feed the belt in into place. Just, ooh, just like this. As you can see, the belt's just dropping onto the water pump pulley nicely. And there we go. Sorted. All I've got to do now is refit this hose again and tension the alternator to put the correct tension on this belt. As you can see, it's a bit floppy at the minute. Right, the next thing to do is to reinstall the fan and the viscous coupling. Um, remembering obviously that is a left hand thread. I think when I was taking it off, I said right hand thread. I actually meant left hand thread. Um, so let's get it installed. It's a bit of a pain because unless it's fully aligned, it won't, uh, unless it's fully aligned, it won't want to screw on. So get it where you think it needs to be. And then believe it or not it worked first time I don't think I've ever managed to get that on first time before so spin it all the way on until it stops like so then get your spanner just give it in it like that you don't need to worry about it being too tight um, it spins clockwise direction so it will never undo um, because it would have to spin in an anti-clockwise direction for it uh, for it to undo Okay, uh, next thing to do is to in, uh, fill, fill the cooling system with coolant. I'm going to use a 50-50 mix. I don't go in for all this um, this uh, waterless coolant, Evans waterless coolant rubbish. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's snake oil. 50-50 uh, mix um, is, is good. It's been good enough for, for all this time. Um, I don't think we need to change now. Uh, so, so, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the next step. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix them up. Get it in the, uh, get it into the poured into the into the car. All right, okay. So everything's installed. All the belts are tight. All the uh, hose clips are done up tight. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some fifty-fifty mix. Okay. Here it is, right here, pre-mixed. Let's get a funnel. Let's get a funnel. Probably going to lose some of this all over the place, but okay. It'll take quite a bit of coolant. I think it's somewhere in the region of about 11 liters, um, including the radiator and the expansion tank and all the block and stuff. But um, I think this is a I think this is a five liter bottle, so it'll probably take two of these. Easily. Well, I'll do. I'll get this in. Get it to the point where it's up to the neck on the expansion tank. Then I'll fire the car up, and we'll get it up to temp. Okay. There we are. That's as much as we're going to get in for the moment. What we need to do next is fire her up. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to fire it up. 
let it run up to temperature. All the while, what we're going to be doing is just making sure that there's no leaks anywhere because um, obviously if there is, then we've got a problem that we'll need to rectify. Um, what we need it to do, get up to temperature, we need the thermostat to open and allow the coolant into the rad. Um, when that happens, the coolant level will drop and then we'll top it up um, and we should get plenty of bubbles coming out of the expansion tank um, once, the, uh, once the air is being forced around. Okay, so here we go. Keys for it, shall I? <laughs> Got some keys now. Okay, so here we go. window heater and turn the heaters up full what we need to do is circulate the cooling uh, the coolant through the uh, through the heater matrix as well um, give it a little bit of time and we should get some uh, we should get some hot air once once all the airs bled out we should get nice hot air out of the uh, out of the vents so the levels just drop so now all the, uh, the coolant circulating through the radiator okay so we've uh, left it for a little while now and there's beautiful hot air coming out and as you can see, the needle is bang in the middle, pretty much where it's supposed to be. Um, I'd call that a job done. Um, yeah, it's lovely and warm, lovely and warm. So yeah, job done. Okay, so that's uh, that's the uh, the cooling system bled up. Um, needle sitting nice in the middle. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the uh, let the coolant cool down overnight. Um, I'll come out in the morning and just uh, double check, double check the level, make sure it's uh, where it needs to be. If it needs a top up, then I'll top it up then when it's nice and cool. Um, thank you for uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you want to see more videos, um, including the Alpina, some motorcycle videos, um, and such and such, then please uh, subscribe, and I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching.